today we're doing the final product review video for the Tineco A10 Hero Cordless Vacuum. This is a very reluctant trig, so I'm going to let him go. We got this about five weeks ago now, I'd say, and I've gotten a lot of comments, even somebody that I grew up with contacted me after seeing our unboxing video on YouTube and asked me, all right, just tell me, you know, what, what do you want, what do you like, do you like the robot vacuums, do you like the uprights, do you like the cordless, like what, what's the best to get? And we emailed back and forth on Facebook and I, I said really it comes down to what your needs are and that's why I do these videos so that you can figure out is this going to be the right vacuum for me. So here we go with this one. I try to cover everything I would think that someone would encounter in their home and also just explain like the setup and that sort of thing. So the Tineco comes with this storage case which allows you to basically store the, the pull, the main body, the sweeper part, and, and I'm not using the right terminology for this, but I'll include a link to where you can buy it that has all the terminology to it. And then it also has um, a spot for the crevice tool and then like the upholstery tool and an extra spot for an, an extra battery back here, but there isn't an extra battery that comes with it. And then they also have this um, motorized tool, which I think is good for pet hair cleanup. And I kind of jerry-rig it to fit in there just so that it's all together in one spot. So this is the main body. And all you do is you can attach, for example, the crevice tool to it to make, you know, get in between um, spots like underneath maybe your uh, dishwasher or between the wall and your fridge or whatever little areas that you might need help with there. But the main thing that I've used it for is this using it more as like a, a broom vacuum, if you will. And that's something else I wanted to cover. These batteries don't last very long and I like to use it in max mode, which is this, um, when it's on, you can turn it to the max by pressing that button. And then there's a little lever here that allows you to turn it so you don't have to hold the trigger. And they don't last very long. The, the battery lasts, I think, like 18 minutes or something. Somebody on Amazon mentioned it. it. So it's really for quick pickups. It's not for like vacuuming your whole house. I still prefer um, the Shark Upright that we just reviewed as my main vacuum. Is if I was going to have one vacuum, that would be it. But this is great for quick pickups, and I really have enjoyed it for that because, for example, this morning after I vacuumed last night, uh, one of the cats had gotten into one of my plants and there was soil, you know, I mean loose dried soil on the carpet and instead of dragging out my upright and plugging it in, I was able to just grab this and quickly pick it up. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'll show you close-ups of how this works, um, how well it picks up and then just kind of some more things about it so you can decide whether or not it's right for you. The power brush does a pretty good job of picking up loose debris as you can see here with the litter scatter off of our litter boxes. And then I also put some red lentils that were uncooked obviously on the floor for it to pick up. And I needed a couple passes for those given that it was like a pile of them. Should have gotten what was underneath my refrigerator too. One of the favorite things I like to do with the cordless is to vacuum up litter scatter, uh, primarily before mopping, but also on trash night, just to make sure that it's all picked up and ready to go for a clean week, if you will. Of course, I love the LED lights. If you guys watch my Shark Apex vacuum review, I love this whole lit power brush thing. It really helps you see under cabinets or under furniture. But I also like the maneuverability of the Dineco getting in between tight spaces. 
like in between the litter mat and my scale or on the other side so I don't have to lift things all the time. It fits nicely between a lot of things, which is a huge advantage. And wanted to show you how it looks in the dark. So you could vacuum in the dark if you wanted. <laughs> Too bad it doesn't have a blue light, then you can have a lot of fun. See where your cat urine was. Here's the power brush on carpet. It does a pretty good job. Uh, our cat scratcher there is kind of falling apart, so it always has loose bits and pieces there. I think this is some nail debris, meaning where the cats have scratched off their nail, or you know, their nails have shed off. Some cat hair, some cat litter in the basement. Some more cat litter in the basement. It does a pretty good job on carpet. I think uprights always do a better job just because carpet requires a little more oomph to them. And another thing is, is I always use the vacuum in max mode. I didn't really see the point in using it in, in the lower mode. Now getting under things, it can get under things, but you see how it lifts a little bit? That was the only disappointing thing that it can lift up a little bit. So obviously when it lifts, it's going to lose its suction. Um, so right there, I can't usually get under all the way with an upright, so that's nice, but the lifting is what stinks, and I think that that's just a design thing there, that if they eliminated that little elbow piece, then it wouldn't lift, because that's the only thing that's keeping it from lifting. You can see that there's quite a bit of hair wrap on the main head of the Tineco. A10 Hero, and that's kind of a bummer because as we all know, hair wrap is a pain in the butt to remove, and who wants to like get their fingers in there and deal with that anyway? But with that said, it does come out fairly easily. I think that's a string of some sort. But that's all the hair wrap that I've had from vacuuming. Wish it didn't happen. So that was pretty easy to clean out, but also a good chunk of it. All right, now on to the accessories that come with the Taneko A10 Hero. This is the crevice tool, and the crevice tool that I usually have used in my house in the past has been on a corded Hoover vacuum, and I have to say that I really, really like the cordless factor on this thing. It makes life a lot easier because I... I would kind of do anything not to drag out that freaking Hoover and have to uh, plug it in and then wind up the cord and all that stuff. I mean, it sounds like such a stupid problem, but it was an issue for me. So I just did a bunch of different shots to show you how it picked up various things that might happen in your home. And I can see a spillage of this happening, especially if you have small children if you're trying to, you know, open up a bag of beans or a bag of lentils or something, this would be an easy way to pick it up. Of course, you could always use a dust brush and broom. Some extra cat hair on furniture. Who doesn't have that? I, again, prefer the lily brush on anything like that. And then if you are in a situation where you can't pick up your cat litter mat, you know, to empty it out like this black hole one, then you could easily use a crevice tool, like the one that comes with the Tineco, to get it all out and make it look clean again. So it's just showing, you know, the depth because there's little piece, there's little holes, and it has to have enough suction power to suck up all of the litter through those little holes. So I thought that this was a good display of how that works. And here it is on the litter robot stairs. This is the two-in-one dusting brush. I'm not a big fan of upholstery dust brushes in general for vacuums. I just would rather tackle dust with a wet cloth than I would with a vacuum. But with that said, obviously you can't wipe down uh, upholstered, upholstered furniture or in this sense, a very messed up cat scratcher. 
So I just tried it on random things to see if I would end up liking it, and it's fine. It's not great, but I'm not also was just experimenting with it to see if it did something more magical than I thought it would. Bristles obviously collect some loose cat fur that you're not going to get with like the crevice tool, for example. In general, I'm just not a big fan of using brushes like this before I use something like the Lily brush. So the upholstery brushes and the motorized pet tools and all that stuff that come with these kind of vacuums don't really interest me for pet hair removal because then I end up having to spend all of my time pulling the hair out, which isn't really what the goal is. So I prefer to use the Lily brush and then use these guys more to get into like for dirt and debris. So first use the lily brush to remove all the pet hair, then come in here and and remove dirt, debris, dander, all that stuff with this stuff so you're not pulling out pet hair. On the two-in-one dust brush, if you press down on the gray button, you can pull off the bristle side and then you have a different upholstery tool to use on furniture or whatnot. The last accessory that I want to talk about that comes with it is the power brush. So it requires electricity, so it has a female end there that meets with the male end on the main body. So you can see that this attachment, the two-in-one dust brush, does not go fully on, but that's fine. Section-wise, it works out well. So when you pull that off and you put on a powered one then it has to click into place and that's kind of reassuring that you've got it on correctly so I do like the ones that snap on here's Charlie's pet bed so we'll tackle it with the power brush max mode good amount of pet hair that's collected which is great that means it did its job but there's also a good amount of pet hair there you can see there's quite a bit of hair wrap so again I reiterate that I prefer to use something like a lily brush before I use something like this power brush but the great thing about the power brush is after you use something like a lily brush then you can use it to really deep clean into the carpet fibers because certainly there's going to be, you know, pet dander and whatnot um, on this because it's what Charlie lays on all the freaking time. It does do a good job at getting deep into the fibers. I mean, you can see that from the raised fibers there versus, you know, from when I was vacuuming, it shows you that it's been vacuumed. All right, to empty the Tineco, all you need to do is stand over, oops, don't, don't press it on, but stand over your trash can and click this. And then it falls out, as does the filter. I'm not a big fan of this bagless vacuum craze. Um, kind of grosses me out really. Anyway, you can line it up by going, there's a, a big slot and two little slots so when you line it up you just line up the big slot and then pop it back in place. And it's ready for the next use with all the dust all over it. <laughs> Is why I don't like bagless things very much. One of the cool things about the Tineco is that it shows you when it's charging and it will keep doing this until it's fully charged. Now, when you're using it, it will start out here and then when the first low, when it's what 33% done or 66% less, then it moves to this one and then when it's more than halfway done, it moves to that one and then it finally goes to red to show you that it's it's almost done. So that's really nice because it warns you that you don't have a lot of time left. 
So it's Sunday night and today I worked in my yard and came inside to grab a few things. Consequently, the mud that was on my shoes is now dry dirt on my floor. So that is one of the great uses of a stick vacuum to quickly pick up that kind of stuff. So I'll show you how that works. I might actually turn it to max. And the cats are scared of it, but not like Charlie with my regular vacuum, like my upright that plugs in, he runs down to the basement and hides by the furnace. With the stick vacuum, he's just like one room away. So that's nice too. It doesn't scare him as much as other vacuums. So these are just great for these like little quick pickups. Actually, Charlie didn't even go so far as to the other room. The lights on this one are nice. This is great too, like if you had company coming over, um, or if you just have kids and have like constant cleanup to do. But if you had company coming over, they didn't want to lug out the big vacuum. This would be a great tool for that. It's really lightweight too, so easy to move around. All right guys, that wraps up our review of the Teneco A10 Hero. And just in summary, the three things that I really, really like about it are the fact that it has that trigger uh, on the trigger you can do that little latch to keep it running so you don't have to keep using your trigger finger to use it. I also love the LED lights on the main head that vacuums up things so that if you're in a poorly lit room or going under a cabinet or something you can see what you're vacuuming up. And then thirdly we were sent the Dyson V8 Animal to compare to it. So I've been comparing and contrasting them as I've used them over the last six weeks. And the dust bin on this one, the two things I already mentioned are two advantages it already has over the, the Dyson. But the dust bin on this one is super easy to empty compared to the Dyson. So those are the three main things that I love about it. I also have heard from a couple of readers that bought one after the unboxing video and they love it too. These stick vacuums are really cool. I didn't really think much of them when I saw other people, you know, using them and whatnot in their homes, but I've really come to appreciate them, especially for like a quick vacuum before I um, mop my kitchen floor or a quick vacuum after I've emptied out the litter boxes to just pick up quick litter scatter without having to drag out my uh, corded upright vacuum. So I'll include a link in the about section below to where you can buy these on Amazon. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.